Hi, it's Cand Candace here from The Passionate Home, and I'm in my own home, and we're all a little bit grounded because of this COVID thing, but you know what? Take advantage of this time in your own home. That's what I'm doing. So I, um, I chalk painted these, um, my kitchen cabinets about six and a half years ago with the anti sewn chalk paint. I used old white and then I clear and dark waxed them. And I don't know, I'm just ready for a change. And so they've held up really amazing. I love how they look, um, but it's time for a color change. So uh, I just thought I'd let you in on the whole, the process. So right now I'm doing the, my least favorite thing, which is I've got some blue Dawn, I've got some degreaser, and actually I'm just gonna go through and the first and least favorite part is actually just cleaning them. So I'm gonna give them a really amazing scrub down. I'm gonna get in all of those creases. Um, chalk paint and kitchen grease are not friends, so the chalk paint will not stick to the kitchen grease. So there's gonna be some spots that you wanna really make sure that you degrease or use an Eco TSP. <coughs> I'm using this one, it's um, La Total Awesome, and actually you can get it at the dollar store, but I love it on so many surfaces. So I'm using that, I'm using some Blue Dawn and some really hot water, and I'm going to just scrub all of my surfaces. I'm then gonna come back and I'm going to just go over them with, with uh, hot water and a cloth just to make sure that all of that residue is gone. And then um, I am going to chalk paint them and you can get your chalk paint at thepassionatehome.com. We are up and running online and, um, and there is a few things, free delivery for a period of time. Also, if you popped into the store and we would run it out in curbside delivery if you're close. So um, keep an eye on it. I can't wait, it's gonna go really fast. Uh, so tomorrow is going to be starting the first coat and I'm excited. So stay tuned and grab your chalk paint at the Fashion at Home and start your own project in your home and make a beautiful life. Hi guys, Candace back here um, at my kitchen cabinet. So yesterday they got cleaned they got degreased and thankfully I have teenage daughters home and they helped, so I didn't have to do it all by myself. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix two Annie Sloan um, chalk paint colors. I'm gonna mix the Amsterdam green with Henrietta and I'm gonna create a beautiful color. I'll do that in a second and you can watch it. Bottoms are going to go um, in that sage green color and the tops are actually gonna go with the old white. So a little bit of, um, of mixing is going to happen. So we're just going to, I know that I want pretty much a 50-50 mix. So I'm doing approximately the whole hand, not quite. And here we go. Isn't that crazy? I know that I, because I'm making, I'm doing my, my whole set of bottoms, I do want to make sure that, um, that I make more than I need. So this container actually has a lid. Watch the magic happen here. It's gonna get beautiful. So crazy that those colors, Henrietta and Amsterdam Green, can make such a beautiful sage green color. I'm gonna bring that up close so you can see it. So as we're mixing here, it's gonna be beautiful. Look at how that's up. Gotta mix it really well. I always have one of these, stir sticks are great, but I have some of these rubber spatulas that I just keep just for paint so that um, I can get everything thoroughly mixed. Coming together, it's gonna be pretty. Anyway, keep watching. I will be making more so that you can see the whole process. So uh, sage green's going on here, old white's going on there, and I sewn chalk paint is the best. Hi, so I'm about to get started. My color mix is here. Look how beautiful that is. It's turned out just stunning. I used Annie Sloan chalk paint. I used a custom blend of Amsterdam green and Henrietta, and it became this beautiful sage green. So um, I get all my paint at the Passion at Home, so uh, go online because it's still open online. Anyway, um, I'm using my Annie Sloan flat brush because I'm looking to um, not get tons of texture and just, so I'm just gonna get started and it's just this easy. So I'm just gonna get into these edges first. And, whoops, sorry, there we go. You can see it's actually just really easy. 
I don't have to remove any of this. They've just been cleaned. I'm starting here in all of my edges. Stabbing right in there. I want to make sure all those edges. And then I'm filling in the center. It's going to be so pretty. So you can see it's actually just really, really easy. I don't want any drips. And after I've got that center in there, I'm just going to feather it out a little bit just to make sure that any of those brush strokes are hidden. Just light touch feathering it out. And the process won't take very long. I'm going to get this first coat on everywhere right inside on the edges. I've chosen not to take uh, the doors off the hinges because these were originally three different sets of oak cabinets that we put together. Some have hinges showing, you'll see up there, some don't. Um, so I'm just gonna go right over top of them because any Sloan chalk paint sticks to the, to the metal and everything. And um, I can't wait, they're gonna be so pretty. Hi, so here I am back in my kitchen cabinet so far. Everything has been given two coats. They're looking fabulous. I wasn't sure if I was gonna distress or not, but my new floor is gonna be white, but a wood look. So I thought, and you know, I live on a farm and I have lots of kids, so this seemed like a smart way to go. So I thought I'd just show you here, because often people wonder about where to distress, how do you distress, and so I'm just using um, 150 grit so it's not super coarse, it's fairly fine. And I've just got a sanding block holding my uh, sandpaper. And I'm just gently gonna go over the edges. So on my cabinets, I have some beautiful profiles. I'm going with the grain and just uh, removing a little bit of that paint. I'm not going to distress in here because it's not gonna naturally distress there. It's gonna distress where you're grabbing at it. So that's what I'm doing, just adding a little bit of distress. So there we go. I um, can just use my finger on it to just get along that inside groove carefully without getting on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to dust that little bit down, just so that when I go to do my waxing, it's not going to be in the way. So I'm actually going to start down here. I've already wiped these down and I think it'll just be really fun to see that color change when you're waxing. So I've got my um, Anisone wax brush and my Anisone clear wax. For those of you who have never used it before, it looks like it's white but this is actually the clear. We have a white as well and it's a little bit whiter than this. It has a light scent to it but actually my kids kind of like it. So I'm just loading up my brush a little bit here. And um, sometimes I use paper towel right now. That's at a premium, so I'm not using that. I have these um, like a J cloth. They're reusable, I can wash them. And um, so I'm just gonna get started here. I'll pull it out a little bit so you can see. And I'm just going to get it into all my little grooves here. Make sure that the whole piece has some wax on it. Sometimes I'll go in little different directions, but I always end up going the same direction. Make sure it's in all the grooves. And then I'm going to actually remove the excess wax. So you know the movie Karate Kid, wax on, wax off. So you want to make sure that you remove that excess wax. And there you have it. It's just that easy. So that one's done. You can see, hopefully, the color difference once it's waxed and when it's not waxed. So you can see here, I've sanded it slightly, so that softens the color. But that true color will come back when you wax it. So I'm just going to keep going here. I'm going to wax the rest of these and all of those after I finish distressing up there. But I wanted you to see a little bit of that process. And um, remember, if you're stuck at home, this is really a fabulous little thing that you can do. 
It doesn't cost a lot of money. It makes a huge impact in my kitchen. I'm so excited. And um, if I was to actually have these done professionally by some paint company, it would cost me thousands of dollars. So I'm super excited. I um, can't wait to have them finished. And, uh, and then get my flooring in, because that will make a big difference as well. So thanks for watching. Uh, there will be a picture at the end of the finished product, so I'm going to keep at her.